we, we, we also talked about new age analytics when we started this presentation, right? You know, many different technologies have had versions and upgrades, and, you know, industry uh, acronyms for versions like Web 1.0, Web 2.0. Analytics also has seen something like that, you know. People are talking about analytics of yesteryear, 1.0, analytics that's emergence of large, fast-moving, unstructured data and lots of new interesting sources, analytics 2.0. And three is, you know, analytics that measure the business impact by combining all pieces of data that exist about your business, right? Totally in control of your data. You're taking data-driven decisions. You're actually doing a lot of data science. So there's some kind of an analytics one, two, to three upgrade, uh, in a sense, happening. Uh, which is probably not advertised in the same manner, but this is exactly what's going on in the market, in the analytics market. Another topic to talk about was about the four strategic goals of big data. People, when they go through this, see the value of data, they have their IT organizations, budget for them, they, they start on, on, on a project, they want to really know what the strategic goals of such solutions that they built could be, you know. Um, you know, the basic goals and the basic terms of any application should be around these. These functions should be in any big data solution, you know. You're capturing, storing, you're analyzing and marshalling data. You're actually sharing generously so that it could be again shared generously by other people. And you're always trying to continuously accommodate new sources. If you're able to build a system with these characteristics, it's pretty close to a big data initiative that you have. You might use different kinds of technologies, but if they have two or more of these goals, you know, you are building a big data solution, right? You might be tackling one source, two sources, but if you have mechanisms to tackle more, if you're sharing them for other people to benefit, if you're analyzing and marshalling them, you're capturing and acquiring them, storing them in a very efficient manner, you are doing some kind of a big data initiative already in your organization. Another question that usually comes up, a uh, very interesting and important one, an important one uh, you know, a lot of companies already have investments in legacy ETL, uh, you know, analytics, reporting functions. How do you see this new age analytics, big data, initiatives, new technology, is that going to cannibalize what is already been invested in? Is that going to wipe out everything? Uh, the, the, there's going to be a happy medium. We've seen organizations that don't shed their existing investments in technology. We've always seen organizations build a big data ecosystem that runs parallelly to an existing legacy EDW or an enterprise data warehouse. What's the difference? Right? The difference is much more in a mindset than in a technology. If you look at traditional IT, EDWs or enterprise data warehouses or data warehousing systems that were built, they were built for a point purpose. The business was always the driver. The business was saying, you know, they were giving you specific instructions as to, well, we need this report or we need this piece of analytics for us to run the business. And IT found a project to do that, or devised a project to do that, and get them back the answer. The shift is still that business is asking questions, but business is asking larger questions. It's saying, capture me all data on the platform that should be ever available about my customer. And so IT has now a mammoth task of going about searching the world and getting all data that's existing about the customer and the business, put onto a scalable platform so that data science can be done or a lot of analytics can be done at will faster and cheaper. That's what they're asking. So it's a bigger project than asking for a point project in, in a world that we exist in. Are these two worlds going to coexist? Absolutely. All these two worlds will coexist. One's not going to cannibalize the other one. So there's, there's these two worlds are going to coexist and you'd see that the the, the new world is actually going to enable to do things faster, better, and cheaper, and the old world is going to sustain a lot of business as usual activities, which are also important to the top line and bottom line of the company. 
So there's going to be a healthy coexistence, and, and this is one of one of the strategies that we've seen many Fortune 500 companies use, where they call this an EDW big data coexistence, um, and, and that's that's something that we see very very much in uh, in the industry. At this point, I would like to introduce one more poll question. And once you choose your options on the poll question, the, uh, the results would be shown in like 30 seconds. That should be quick. It's a pretty simple one. So 75% uh, says no and 25% uh, says yes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, uh, the question was, does your organization have a big data strategy in place, right, uh, for dealing with big data analytics? And yeah, it's pretty fair to say that most companies don't. Some companies are in the process of getting there. Some companies have been some early adopters, so those numbers seem Pretty, pretty okay. Uh, one other way to measure the value that big data and analytics bring, analytics from big data brings to an organization, is to look at it in terms of the analytics maturity from one to two to three, analytics 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0, like we talked about. Right? If you look at this uh, infographic or, or this graphic, you know. You see a lot on, on the left side that a lot of organizations do operational analytics. They are able to actually look at KPIs, they're able to look at trends, they're able to forecast. Uh, probably some, some people do gut feel forecast, some people use some kind of uh, a mechanized way and a data driven way to forecast. Uh, they have rules uh, that can be applied on top to do forecast. So they're able to do operationally whatever they need. A few other organizations have gone one step further. They're able to actually take historical data and apply seasonal or variable parameters on top and get some analytical insights, add seasonality, mix, if it's retail, add any other things that affect their business, you know, and do some analytical insights. What organizations haven't been able to do but are starting to do is actually predict. Uh, and that's hence the term predictive analytics, right? Are they able to predict something that could actually hit the roof, right? Are they able to predict something that actually could make them stock more for their business if they are, 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 a, are a wholesale guy or, or a retail guy, right? Such predictions haven't been done. Big data is giving people an opportunity to do that. The last one, or probably the, the cusp of it, is actually prescriptive analytics, where people are able to operationalize analytics, they're able to do insights, they're able to predict. If they're able to predict and if they're able to predict that with a higher degree of accuracy, how can they prescribe that as something to change the way their business does? It's a whole cycle where you know a prediction goes from being a prediction to an accurate prediction or to with a higher degree and then it becomes a prescription so that it helps your business change. In terms in, in many terms, it, it becomes a, a, a way to self-heal your own business when your business runs into problems. That's probably a, a huge ask, but organizations will be driven to that goal as more and more data becomes available and more big data technologies help them actually harness this power of data. That's one way to measure. If you look at the right side, you know, the operational analytics capabilities actually gave them business monitoring capabilities. Analytical insights gave them business insights. Predictive analytics is actually going to give them a way to optimize their business. And if they use that data very cleverly, it's going to actually give them a way to monetize that data. There's going to be a day when people say that this analytics or this piece of project that actually fetches me this analytics has given me a cross sell or an upsell of so many dollars. People are not measuring that today, but someday they're soon able to uh, show that value, and that day is not far off. 
And if people are able to prescribe and make their businesses better and self-healing, you know, they are achieving some new heights in business transformation, right? So that probably is a cycle where if big data stands its hype and goes through the technology evolution, and then if people start embracing it in the manner that they have been embracing, we probably will touch these kinds of heights if, if data is harnessed well. Uh, that's something that's yet to be seen, but I'm, it's, it's, it's showing all signs of getting there. One other topic that is 